in a brand new 2021 study in clinical interventions in aging. There's a study out about high impact exercise. Yes, you heard me right. Not just high intensity, but high impact exercise during menopause, comparing that to low impact and to low intensity exercise during menopause. And you're going to want to pay attention to this. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I share information about your top struggles and concerns and Information and research so you can make informed decisions in your inspiration to age with energy and vitality that you want, need, and deserve. And today, actually this episode preempts other scheduled episodes. Does that sound very official? It's not. I'm the boss. I get to pull the shots. But literally, I am recording this in my pajamas in my bedroom because I have two guests who are sleeping still and or will be soon making coffee and therefore noise and Truman's outside and the door is open. But I'm taking a few moments and literally this will be a short one. So if you have a walk planned, you're either going to want to put it on repeat or go right on to an episode that was a favorite. You might want to hear again. But this was so important that I'm also posting it and you'll see the literal graphics either in the show notes if you want to go there or you will see them in Instagram and I will also spread them around and spread the love to Facebook. So wherever you like to watch and hang out and only you who are my YouTube channel sir subscribers That, of course, is only an audio upload. So even when it plays, though, there are a couple of graphics that won't display either in the notes or in um, there won't be a video. You'll just see that still image as always. But what I found is it's better for you to find it where you want to find it, where you're already hanging out and give it to you in that format than if you decide to come along to the show notes. Today, that'll be at Flipping 50 dot com forward slash high impact exercise. Words I don't often use and for good reason. So before I jump in, uh, pun intended, because we are talking about high impact today, want to let you know this episode is sponsored by the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. And here's why. Because often I'm going to tell you about high intensity, high impact exercise today compared to low intensity and or low impact exercise and its results on several factors related to menopause and menopause symptoms, menopause changes. But many times you may feel like I need a trainer. I need a health coach to help me do this. And if you're going to look locally, simply because maybe that's your habit and you're not used to the idea that you can work with anyone in the world, including me. So in the past seven years, I've worked with women in Italy, in Australia, in fact, multiple people in Australia, in Canada, in Trinidad, um, all across the United States. And, you know, that's just private coaching but we have women from all over in our programs. That may not be something or wasn't potentially until about 13 months ago, the beginning of the pandemic that you begin to explore. But now the world is online and you've got choices. You can work with anyone in the world. That I find as I'm looking for houses and I can move anywhere based on my work is harder. It's a harder choice to make than when you have few but really good choices, which most women tend to prefer. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if that is you. So what I want you to do is narrow down your selection. One of the ways you can do that is let us know if you're looking in a, in a certain area and you want to work with somebody face-to-face. You really need and feel you need right now because it's all you know, somebody physically with you. Now, personally, I don't do training sessions. I don't do training sessions live by Skype. I have done one or two 
beginning of the pandemic, working with somebody for the very first time whom I didn't know, knew the form when she was at home. We'd gone over things on equipment at a facility, but um, I no longer do that kind of work. I instead will demonstrate using videos from my programs, my library, my products, and give those to clients to demonstrate or show them illustrations. And or we'll do a sneak peek with a Skype or a FaceTime so that I can see form. But what you will get is either a video or a list of exercises once I know you know what form, proper form is. And that's possible with anybody, but you still want to choose trainers who understand that we need to take into consideration your, sure, your physiology, your muscles, but also your specific conditions around existing joint issues, the history that you've got and are bringing with you, potential past injuries or current things you might be nursing, lopped in those endinitis, and they're chronic and you're dealing with them, and that we also take into consideration your hormones. And somebody who can juggle that is a unique individual. So who's used to doing the physical? There are a lot of coaches who can talk to you and address the hormone side of things, but not necessarily walk you down. Here's the exercise and here's the how. And oh, if you need a modification because this one option is not working, here's what that is. That is exactly what the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist does is finds trainers and health coaches who have that experience or supports them, health coaches, specifically in teaming up with trainers to find what are good programs, what are good programs that I could support and send my clients to, even though I'm actually working with them on the accountability factor and so many other things. So, I will put the link in the show notes, and this is for all of you health coaches and personal trainers who also are out there listening and or who would love to wake up in the morning and have that be your job. One that helps people, changes lives, is a healthy environment, both for you and for your clients. And gone are the days in the 80s when having a full schedule of clients means exercising all day. Wearing yourself down and out is no longer necessary. It's a limited belief if you're a trainer that you will be exercising all day. And we need to really look at that because you're not really walking the talk if you're doing that. So Link in the show notes to the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist. More details on that for those of you doing it now or thinking about training or health coaching. This is the next level, and a lot of women are looking for help, looking for potentially working with women just like you. All right. So, as I tell you this, I want you to keep in mind everything that we just mentioned. So, as you're looking for a program, be very picky, be very choosy, know what you're looking for. Don't just go shopping. But here we go. Today may be mind-blowing. It may change your perspective. I do aim to give you informed ways to make decision. You may not get there. You know, many of us take maybe seven exposures. And actually the truth is now that number has grown significantly because we have so much information coming at us in order to make a change, in order to act on something we've been thinking about or it's been marinating in our head. We probably have to see it dozens of times now or hear it. So I may simply be one of those times and that is okay. I will take that as a role, moving you closer to considering something that might be better for you. Okay. So I started this out. The title is high intensity, high impact exercise during menopause. The results are in. So did you wonder about that title? High impact during menopause? Are you thinking that might get you hurt with the wrong start and progression? It just might. If you're extremely fragile, you know it and You've been told that from a physician or you have coexisting conditions, say fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, as well as advanced osteoporosis. 
it's not advised that you do high impact exercise, but high intensity still may be appropriate for you. But for other women, those of you transitioning through menopause, you need to look closely at what you're doing and at what you're believing. High impact, weight bearing, high intensity, velocity resistance training. So the two of them together, high impact weight bearing. So that, by the way, sister, is not walking. That would be jump roping. That might be jumping from the floor to a step, might be jumping from the step to the floor carefully. We don't do that on day one, by the way. So listen carefully. Do not go out and do this right now simply because you have those things. If you're thinking, what about rebounding? No. So actually, there is some proof that rebounding improves bone density when enough force is placed, but it's very difficult from peeking into classes, from watching women do those jumps, we're not getting the impact force. We're doing a little bit too much trampolining instead of rebounding, powering down. And if you're powering down, you can only take a few minutes of that in a row. It's really literally got to be intervals as well, but you will not have the same ground forces. Now, If you're along a continuum and you absolutely can't do that, you are one of those more fragile. We also have to look closely at, hmm, is rebounding appropriate for you? So if it has more risk, causes more pain, then it gives you rewards. We also want to look closely at that. So we want to combine these two things, high impact weight bearing with in your program, not at the same session. So listen carefully to this. And I have to say this multiple times because no matter who we are, I mean, you and I need to hear things in different ways. And if there's a thousand people listening to this immediately as I release it, what I say may not resonate if I only said it in one way. So if I sound like I'm repeating myself, I Very well might be, but it's intentional. So what I want you to be thinking is you do, as a part of your programming every week, have a certain amount of high impact weight bearing exercise. You also then have high intensity velocity resistance training. You do both or each of them three times a week. Now you might do that Monday and uh, Wednesday and Friday. And now I will tie this in. So many of you heard me say rest 72 hours between actually tends to show greater energy expenditure. In this particular study, though, I'm going to leave this to at least do every 72 hours, which means you won't quite be doing three times a week. You'll do that about every other week. Uh, Because you'll you'll not be doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You'll do Monday and then Thursday and then Sunday and then Tuesday. You have to rotate through that schedule to get back again to a Monday, Thursday. But the idea here is that either same day you're doing a high impact exercise session followed by or preceded by a high intensity velocity strength training program. And I'll describe that just a little bit. So as high velocity would suggest, that is speed. So speed though under control. And that means the addition of power. So it's not out of control. It's not momentum. It's actually pushing really hard and slowing down to return. Pushing really hard, slowing down to return. This is one of the things that I will do in many of my exercise videos. One of the advantages is you can back off of the heavy weight recommendation that is helpful for bone density and for, by the way, boosting metabolism, which ultimately helps weight loss. And you don't have to go quite as heavy. It's a little easier on the joints and adding that power gives you equal benefits. In fact, adding power, I published in 2015, You Still Got It Girl, the book that power actually supersedes slow and heavy strength training where bone density benefits are concerned. So variety is good. I wouldn't totally eliminate the heavy and slow, but I would alternate. And that also will give your body a break and much needed different stimulus. So the idea is 
concurrently, meaning both of those exist in your program, but we're not going back and forth in the same session between let's do jumping, let's do squat, let's do jumping, let's do chest press. No, no, and no. So many of you know, I am not an advocate of that type of program. The best results across the board exist in the literature for women separating, doing high quality, high intensity interval training and doing high quality, high intensity resistance training. Whether you do them on the same day or alternate days really has more to do with, well, what's your energy level? Can you sustain it? Work equally hard in both or What I find for myself and for most people is doing a shorter session every day. Number one, puts you in habit. It's like going to get that cup of coffee in the morning is so routine, you probably don't even think about it. And until you have to do a blood test and fast and you can't have that creamer in the coffee, right? That kind of automatic addiction, if you will, or... Uh, attention to exercise at a specific time each day. Maybe some days that's only walking slowly, leisurely around the block or doing yoga, but others it's high intensity interval training or high intensity weight training. Probably the best way to make it a lifestyle thing, just like brushing your teeth. So that group that did subjects wise in the study High impact weight bearing plus high intensity velocity resistance training three times a week was compared to a control group that performed only low intensity work. So imagine lying on the floor doing leg lifts and maybe doing some walking. That was it. That's what they did. So the results were in the exercise control group, bone mineral density was up in the spine specifically. Okay, lumbar spine, lower back spine. And in the control group, it was down. In the hip, it was slightly increased, or I'm sorry, slightly decreased. Let me clarify that. Don't want to make that mistake. Slightly decreased in both groups. Now, one thing I do want to say that I didn't mention, this study was to have been 18 months. Guess what interrupted and disrupted life for the researchers and the subjects? You guessed it. Ding, ding, ding. COVID. And so at about 12 months, everything shut down. Things were down for about a month and everyone not knowing what they do. They decided at 13 months to call it quits because the projection wasn't looking good. Gyms weren't going to open up. They couldn't have people come back in. They really couldn't control the exercise as they wanted to. So they stopped it. Really six months short of completion. Researchers do say that their belief, because the progression for those people who already had slight osteopenia in menopause, they took very slowly. So there were cycles that were going to increase the intention or intensity and progress, and then we were going to back off and give them a little resting period for optimal bone remodeling and then cycle again. In training in my programs, I call this periodization. And athletes are used to hearing that word. You know, in a season, you do a certain kind of workout. Outside, before a season, you do other kinds of work. And similarly, you and I should be exercising that way as well. We rotate the way we train. And so in our 12-week programs, for instance, you're potentially, you know me from a stronger program. We will do month one, month two, and month three have a progression, but week one, two, three, and four look very different in that course so that we are treating you very differently. Now, everyone is known to alter their own program, but if you color outside the lines, you're no longer doing an evidence-based, science-based protocol that's proven to work. So keep in mind, you really want to abide by what's shown, what's working. So let's go back. I'm going to start at the top. Bone mineral density in the lumbar spine for the exercise control group. It was up for the control group, down. Hip decreased slightly. Researchers suspected 
that in the exercise control group, because they weren't allowed to go through the most intense time when the weight would be the heaviest and most challenging of exercise, that there wasn't an opportunity to actually have that development show up. So that's all they can do is speculate, unfortunately. Lean muscle was up in the exercise group, down in the control group. Total fat was down in the exercise group, in the high intensity group, and just maintained. So stayed same fat amount in that control group. Abdominal fat was down in the exercise group and maintained in the low intensity group. Menopause symptoms went down significantly in the high intensity exercise group and in the control group stayed exactly the same. No change in their negative effects of menopause. Strength and power were up in the exercise group and in the control group, there was much less change, but there was also a slight change there. So again, researchers suspected that there was not enough time dedicated toward the highest of intensity and impact exercise in that exercise group without that additional six months to see the gap widen because between the significance of change and what occurred in the other group. So I'll ask again after hearing all of that, high impact during menopause with a safe start a safe progression, criteria to know what to expect, what to feel, what not to feel. High impact exercise during menopause has its place in your quest for longevity. And in other words, if you want a health span that matches your lifespan, you need to find some high intensity movement or determine, is that something I can right now gradually begin to do? Here's the thing. You can't wait. You can't just walk. Hear it today, right now, right? And the results from this 2021 study featuring postmenopausal women with osteopenia. It was intended to be 18 months, but cut short due to COVID, six months short. The researchers suspected for bone mineral density. The results in the last six months that would have been obtained when training probably were not reflected, unfortunately, but we still have some pretty good evidence that high intensity wins compared to low intensity. So if you need some support right now, I'm offering for these last few days of April. So if you're coming later, the programs will still be there. The special juicy things probably will not, but you can use code pandemic fix, all one word, no spaces for 15% off select digital videos, video programs, plus DVD specials will be seen there at flipping50.com. And here's the researcher's reminder. The most quote unquote, the most prominent bone decline might occur during the three-year phase of what's called transmenopause, one year before and two years after the final menstrual cycle. Hip bone density measures and, again, strength and power results were the two things that were left outstanding and that researchers speculate. Again, there wasn't enough time with the proper changes in programming that would have occurred that they were building up to for those last six months to see the dramatic change. And yet the unintended early termination of the study due to COVID was unfortunate, but still it offers positive effects, evidence for the positive effects of high intensity exercise and high impact as suggested in other emerging research studies. So this isn't an isolated only study, but here's the deal. You, my dear, are not delicate, and treating yourself as if you are short changes your results. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear if you're actually doing high impact or you're able to. And here's the second best. If you're not, be sure you are doing high intensity. Still getting breathless for your physiology, your soft tissue, and your heart, and still doing strength training, resistance training to the heavy 
degree that your joints and ligaments will tolerate. And there you have it. I hope that's been helpful. It's a short episode. For more, you can go to the show notes and that'll be, yeah, at flipping50.com forward slash high impact exercise. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.